Today, I rise support Representative Scott's motion to refuse to adopt this bill and to send it back to the committee. As a freshman legislator, this has been a, a very different year of legislation. Uh, we are seeing this one-sided government that has the governor, the Senate, and the House, and as mentioned, really have left 50% of Minnesota out of the room, out of the negotiations. One of the most important topics that when we were talking to people at the doors, especially after the 2020 riots, was public safety. This, I believe, was in the top two. It might have been the top number one priority of most Minnesotans as we were out there campaigning and talking to our constituents. What did you want from your representative? Public safety. So we have to ask, is this a public safety bill? Or is this a not so safe public safety? In this bill, we, th we see things like reduced probation times. Minnesota, if this is a public safety bill and we are having a huge crime problem, a rising crime problem in Minnesota, is dealing with public safety, is it a good idea to be reducing probation times to a maximum of five years? And this is retroactively. Minnesota, if this is a public safety bill, and Minnesota is ranked third in sex trafficking, which is not something that I think anyone here in this chamber is proud of, nor should anyone in Minnesota be proud of that number. We are ranked third in sex trafficking. Sex trafficking members, that is exploitation of our children. So during this session, when we have seen bills come across, bill after bill, the extreme radical abortion bill, which then allows a child to have an abortion with no parental consent. We are number three in sex trafficking. Did that legislation increase our public safety or decrease our public safety for our children? This is very concerning. As we passed off this floor and then the governor gleefully signed into law the sanctuary trans bill, does that make that less safe for children in Minnesota or more safe for children in Minnesota? This needs to go back to the conference committee. There are serious concerns for the state of Minnesota wrapped up inside this bill. There is funding for a new, whatever you want to call it, thought police, incidences, is I think the word you wanted to use. Incidences that you do not agree with someone else. This story actually, thanks to Representative Niska over there who found this, thank you. This made national news. Minnesota, this is wrapped up in this public safety bill, funding 
for this database. And yet, the Minnesota media has failed to inform the public. Also concerning wrapped up in this bill would be the new gun bills that are coming through, the unconstitutional gun bills. It does matter, people are watching and they expect us to legislate by following the rules, the procedures. That absolutely is not happening this session. I know in the media we like to show surveys. Minnesotans support these gun bills. How deceiving are the questions? I have heard some of the questions. How deceiving when we lead this with, don't we want to end school shootings? Don't we want to do these background checks? Don't we want to implement red flag laws? How deceiving. These laws are present in other states, members, and it's not difficult to find this out. January 30th, 2023, ABC News. Six mass shooting in California in 13 days. Six mass shooting in 13 days. Representative Doubt, I believe, said this. There is no criminal that is out there committing a crime with a gun is going to go get a background check. There is no criminal out there that is going to be flagged on these red flag laws. The mass shootings will continue as they do in other states who have these laws. But unfortunately, we allow this rhetoric to drive this fear and emotion, and we are not addressing the real problem. Members, how can this be a public safety bill and we are reducing sentencing. How can this be a public safety bill and we are making it more difficult for lawful gun owners to protect themselves? Statistically, a criminal, I, I don't have where I saw this, but I don't have where I saw it, but a criminal, is arrested 11 times before they commit murder. 11 times. So if we're reducing time in jail, doesn't that go to tell you they're going to be out more to recommit crimes again? Members, this is not public safety. Last year, I rode with a county um, sheriff, a sergeant in my, in my district. I rode with him for four hours. I'm not sure how many other people in here took that time, but I would recommend, highly recommend to do it. You learn a lot riding with them. And when I asked him what are some of his biggest frustrations, it is that he said, he will arrest someone and he sees them back out on the streets. Right now we have a problem, Minnesota, with recruiting, hiring, and keeping our police working. So is this a public safety bill? Is this a public safety bill? 
if we are reducing probationary times and making it even more difficult for these police to be working? And I know this has been discussed, but I do want to bring this up. Especially after uh, Representative Becker Finn had said that we are exploiting kids for clicks. When we're talking about the language of the pedophilia, the NISCA amendment from being stripped from this. Members, let's stop with the rhetoric and the emotion. Every one of you in here voted for the NISCA amendment. Every one of you voted on the language that says the physical or sexual attachment to children by an adult is not a protected class under this chapter. Let's not play games. Every one of you voted yes on that amendment. Every one of you did. And yet, when we pointed that out to the public, that you stripped out the amendment that you voted for, here's the language. We are spreading a dangerous lie. We are prejudiced against the LGB community. Crimes against children are still crimes against children. I think I hit that. Minnesota, what kind of world are we about to enter if you're allowing this party to create a database to track people who might think differently from them? And this is a perfect example wrapped up right in this bill. There is not one incidence, not one, and if I'm wrong, please show it to me, where I have seen any member or any person from the public connect that someone who is a homosexual, who is part of the LGBTQ community, anyone, that they linked them to being a pedophile. I have not seen that. I have not seen it. So we, we can't point out facts in this chamber anymore. We can't point out facts that the definition was stripped out. This was stripped out. Sexual orientation does not include a physical or sexual attachment to children by an adult. That was stripped out. And then when we found out that you did not want that to be under the sexual orientation clause, we, we quite honestly, I thought very respectfully, very respectfully offered that as the NISCA amendment in a different part of the bill. Because we actually tried to listen to you and we tried to understand what the concern was. So I was told the concern was having that language under sexual orientation. That's what I was told. With the NISCA amendment, we simply said that pedophilia would not be a protected class. And once again, have never nor seen anyone suggest someone from an LGBTQ community is a, is a pedophile. Never seen that linked. And yet, when facts are pointed out to the public, which apparently the majority party doesn't like, because they are, for one of the first times, actually getting information because we're breaking through the media, 
we're actually getting the message out that the media is not reporting. And when we do that, we are told this is a dangerous lie, that we are being prejudiced, and that crimes against children are still crimes. Yeah, I agree, crimes against children still are crimes. Why did you vote green? Why did you vote yes to the NISCA amendment? Unanimously, and then strip out the language. Are we not here to protect children? Again, there is absolutely no link. There is no link that you are claiming to exist. They are two separate things. Now down the road, okay, there's many incidences where adults work with children in schools, in daycares, their coaches. There's many incidences where you might be hiring for a job an adult who's going to be surrounded by children. That's their job. Okay, that's a fact. It also is a fact that pedophiles or minor attracted people exist in our community. That's a fact. Why can we as a body not agree that we have to have some sort of protection in place that if an employer was aware that someone was a minor attracted person and again, this has nothing to do with homosexuality. Nothing. I don't know how I can emphasize anymore. But there are people who are pedophiles, who are att attracted to children. Why can we not emphasize then, in law, that an employer who is not hiring someone who is a known pedophile or someone attracted to minors, why can we not put in law for a wall of protection that that employer could deny them employment and there would not be some sort of lawsuit later? Members, we are making laws and we should be crystal clear on the laws to not leave this up to interpretation later. We need to be crystal clear on our laws. That is our duty to not leave this up to interpretation later. Members, I think it's very unfortunate that it has come to this point that we can't simply put in our amendment that we all agreed to with a green vote. But more so than that, I think Minnesotans expect us to work together. There is a way that we could do this, and I do believe that the Republicans came to you to try to do this in the best and the most respectful way so that we were respecting all of you. There is a way to do this. It is disappointing, and not only that, but this puts wide open the door of the future of your hate crime database, of how if someone just does not think 100% the way that you do, and we were told this by one of the representative members at the beginning, if we don't agree with you 100%, that all of a sudden we are labeled 
this is a scary road to be going down. I would challenge you to look at history. And in history, the party that was trying to silence the opposition, that's never the party that you want to be on the same side with. So members, please support Representative Scott's amendment to refuse to adopt this, as this is not a public safety bill. This is not going to lower crime. This is not going to stop gun crime. And this is opening up our children not being protected in the future. Thank you.